But you, but you don't have a problem with the state of Israel? I don't have a problem with the state of Israel as long as Israel gives back Palestinian rights. But uh, Israel says that it is defending its uh, people. They're uh, not? I mean, uh, the, the rockets go, going to... Yeah, but you should get the other side of the story. I mean, this is what they say. But uh, they don't say that they run the longest occupation in modern times, that they have occupied the Palestinians for 66 years, that they've annexed more land than... Even when you sit here, if you look from my window, you see a settlement or you see a checkpoint. And uh, with a situation like this, you know, you cannot negotiate your pizza while it's being eaten. All right, young and naive, we are in... Are we in Palestine? Can we call it that? Yeah, definitely so. Don't hesitate. I mean, people are calling it Palestinian territories or occupied territories. Uh, to me and to a million Palestinians, it's uh, uh, Palestine for sure. And who are you? Uh, my name is Sabri Saidam. Uh, I do teaching in Birzeit University, which is a local university in the West Bank. I teach innovation management and I teach entrepreneurship as well. And I also uh, love to think that a quarter of my life is focused on politics. So what, what do you do in politics? Uh, I used to be the Minister of Telecom back in 2005. And uh, then I became uh, an advisor to the President on Telecom and IT. And now uh, I co-chair uh, the council of the main party in Palestine called Fatah. Okay. Uh, I talked to some, someone from, Fat, from Fatah. Who's, uh, what's the difference between Fatah and Hamas? Oh, uh, there's a big difference. Uh, we both uh, strive to liberate Palestine. Uh, in recent years, we have decided to follow a peace process with Israel. Hamas still believes in uh, armed struggle. So we take different routes in uh, uh, conveying the message to the Palestinians and striving to liberate this country. Are Hamas terrorists? Uh, to me, uh, Palestinians are uh, different. Uh, they belong to different uh, schools of thought. So Hamas is not a terrorist organization. It is categorized as a terrorist organization by the very people who had witnessed the elections in which Hamas ran. Uh, at the time, and I think there's a great deal of uh, hypocrisy. Why did you accept Hamas at the time, despite the fact that it has a different doctrine than Fatah, to run in the elections, you monitor the elections, you declare their victory, and now came later and say, oh, no, 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 this is a terrorist organization. Well, maybe they were disappointed that they won. Well, uh, maybe it's the case, but, uh, you know, people from your country uh, witnessed the elections, and then they declared Hamas as a winner at the time, and later came uh, government-wise and said, no, 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 we don't accept this uh, victory. We should boycott the Palestinians. And uh, back in 2006, 2007, we had total stagnation. No salaries were paid to public sector, and that uh, caused a rift uh, uh, amongst the Palestinians. So to me, it's hypocrisy. You, know, you cannot accept the, the process, but yet refuse the results. You either live with both or declare yourself to be a lunatic and don't accept democracy at all. So, so uh, should our uh, or should Israel negotiate with Hamas or uh, with all, all of you guys and even Hamas? I mean, look, at the end of the day, uh, the Palestinians are not going to exterminate the Israelis, and the Israelis can't do it. Uh, you're filming while a war is taking place in Gaza, and you could see Israel has used 15,000 tons of bombs and needed more ammunition uh, to fill uh, its, its uh, tanks and uh, its machine guns. But yet, uh, the people of Gaza still exist. Uh, identity cannot be wiped out by a press of a button. Uh, people fight for their independence. And uh, according to international law, every country, every people who are oppressed have the right to oppose occupation. So that sometimes uh, has different turns. Some, one man's hero is another man's terrorist. And that's the, that's the game. Uh, is Gaza occupied? Gaza is definitely occupied, although Israel says, you know, it has withdrawn back in 2005. What it has done basically is that it has redeployed its forces. It has pulled its forces to the outskirts of Gaza and closed all borders. And that led to a dire situation of desperation. People uh, were unable to move. Passage of goods was brought to the minimum. And with that uh, condition, you would expect people to react in different ways. That's why we saw rockets, that's why we saw tunnels, that's why we saw people marching in different capitals asking for the end of siege on Gaza. But uh, I was told uh, they are viewed, Hamas fighters are viewed as resistant uh, fighters. Uh, would you call them that as well? Well, uh, the whole Palestinian nation now stands uh, versus the Israeli attack that's taking place. So to us, we are all in the resistance uh, trench uh, confronting the occupation. 
But yet in Fatah, we still believe uh, that uh, peace will have to come one day, that uh, our war is not with the Jews, as some people would like to uh, propagate a message of hatred that uh, exists between Arabs and Jews. It is against occupation. And sometimes emotions run high, sometimes rhetoric uh, runs high. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, history shows that people can't exterminate each other. They would have to live side by side. And let me remind you, back before 1948, uh, Jews and Muslims and Christians were living in coexistence, total coexistence. It's when uh, this notion of starting the state of Israel that was initiated back in 19, uh, uh, sorry, in 1898, that the whole uh, game changed and it became uh, so uh, terrible. The situation became so volatile until 1948 when Israel was established and things went totally out of control. But you don't have a problem with the state of Israel? I don't have a problem with the state of Israel as long as Israel gives back Palestinian rights. But uh, Israel says that it is defending its uh, people. They're not? I mean, the, the rockets go, going to... Yeah, but you should get the other side of the story. I mean, this is what they say. But uh, they don't say that they run the longest occupation in modern times, that they have occupied the Palestinians for 66 years, that they've annexed more land than... Even when you sit here, if you look from my window, you see a settlement or you see a checkpoint. And uh, with a situation like this, you know, you cannot negotiate your pizza while it's being eaten. And you cannot accept your pizza being stolen and yet ask for the security of your opponent. It's, it's really a terrible idea. And whoever said to Israel that this is a good idea, it's a terrible idea. You cannot couple occupation with security. It's, it's nonsense. How can you say to your people, you know, I'm defending you. I don't want any rockets to come to you. But you don't say to them, you know, let me go and end the occupation so people on the other side can live in peace and prosperity. And you can live in peace. It's a formula that I don't understand. Maybe we should get you to become the prime minister of Israel. Uh, maybe you can put some sense. I'm, I'm too naive. No, I think you're uh, um, a sophisticated person with a lot of knowledge, and life has to be taken easy. You know, uh, I wish I was never a politician with a suit, maybe shorts and t-shirt. I can understand the word better, but we have to do our job. We have to fight for the independence of the people in different uh, modes. I teach in a university. I consider this to be part of resistance. I am here. I consider this to be part of preserving my identity. But at the end of the day, I want to see an end to all this. This madness is serving nobody. And I think this area especially has had a lot of bloodshed. Uh, you mentioned the settlements. Are settlements a good thing in the West Bank? Uh, I'm uh, surprised that you say that, but I consider this to be a provo provocative question. I like it. Uh, settlements are established on 60% uh, uh, of uh, this uh, territory. People say, oh, how 60%? A settlement is not just a block of cement that is there. Settlement was, would have to have roots that's connecting uh, these settlements. Why, why, why don't they take the Palestinian roads? Uh, well, uh, some roads are shared, but uh, even in, uh, in international law, this territory is considered to be occupied. So Israel is not, uh, we have not reached a state whereby uh, Palestine was divided between Jews and Arabs. Uh, back in 1948, now uh, we have uh, Israelis who are coming and establishing settlements and are uh, saying that we are here to stay in our biblical land, uh, land of our ancestors, and it is the land of Arabs, it's the land of Palestinians. Uh, they're establishing uh, their settlements, they're annexing these lands, they're stealing the lands, they're stealing the water, they're confiscating uh, people's lives by manning the roads, and uh, these roads and settlements are forming a network that uh, stretch to 60% of the West Bank. So imagine uh, tomorrow, if you let go of this, people will be at your doorstep, and there will be a settlement at your doorstep. And this is not a life that you can call coexistence. Coexistence would have to be uh, served by peace, by justice, and only when justice is served that the Palestinians will sit tight and will be contented. Do the settlers have the same rights as Palestinians? They have more rights, like, more rights. Uh, you know, they have swimming pools in the settlements. Uh, That's the right. Every settler has a right to have a well, swimming pool. Well, <laughs> I wish every Palestinian has the right to have a, 
but uh, the reason I use the pools is to basically identify a major problem that's in the West Bank. Like you go to the to Bethlehem or you go to some localities of Hebron or Hebron city, you will see that there's scarcity of water. Some localities don't get water for six months, while settlements next door have plenty of water and have the swimming pools that I mentioned at the beginning. So the issue of uh, fairness is not there. The issue of justice is missing. And as long as this component is missing, there will never be peace. And people think, you know, Israel is just occupying territory. It's about geography. It's not about uh, geography at all. It is geography plus water plus airspace. Like, you know, you are a computer whiz, I'm sure. You use YouTube, Mm -hmm. you use 3G, and you take it for granted in Germany that you have 3G and you have 4G and 5G is in the making. How much much G is that to you? We have just two Gs, and with the two Gs, we don't get much internet uh, here. Uh, we're addicted to internet. I mean, because it, it, Israel, Israel has three G. Oh, but does not allow the Palestinians. Why? They say it's security. Why security? They, you never understand. Mobile I'm, connection is... I'm a telecom man. I understand it all. But, you know, to explain to people that you can't have 3G because of security. Mm, really? A story that doesn't fly. Mm. It doesn't Ex- fly. Ex- explain that a little bit. Well... Uh, according to the Oslo Agreement, anything that we have to acquire would have to be accepted by the Israelis, inclusive of... Uh, and, and vice versa? Uh, <laughs> that's a big thing. Uh, I See, fairness, again. Mm. If fairness was there, it should, should have been vice versa. But uh, the frequency spectrum that we use for the different, uh, for the different uh, services, including uh, 3G and 4G, and even the operation of FM radios and TVs, would have to be acquired and would have to be accepted by the Israelis. So we have applied for 3G. Israel maintains one line that this is security category and you should only operate through Israeli operators. And we would like to establish our gateway to the world. Why do we have to go through Israeli operators? In fact, there's been resolutions taken by an institution called the International Telecom Union that allows us the right of way so we can access our own gateway or establish our gateway to the world. But Israel says, no, 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 3G, you have to come through our own companies. And with that, we don't have that reliable access to the Internet uh, with with filming, with audio, with the different services that Internet can provide you. That now in Europe, you take for granted that everywhere you play with your mobile. Here, you would have to log into first uh, to the first Wi-Fi you come across. Mm. Again, it's the issue of fairness that's missing. Is there anything fair in uh, Palestine? Is there any any good things that are happening in the last year? I think there's the energy of people that's good. You see a lot of youth uh, charged with uh, energy. There is... uh, Like like violent energy? Well, uh, sometimes it spins out of hand, but it's not... uh, I I wasn't meaning that. Uh, When it comes to conflict, yes, you will see different manifestation of things, inclusive of Israel. Israel is no innocent in any way. Uh, But uh, there is determination that occupation has to end. Uh, But you see a lot of things. You're in Ramallah here. People think that we live uh, in outer space, that we don't, you know, we have people who come to us here thinking that we ride on the back of camels. Uh, No offense to camels, but uh, basically we have our buildings, we have our own infrastructure. We are sophisticated versus technology, despite the fact that we lack what Israel is not allowing us to get. But 82% of us are connected to the internet. And uh, 97% 97% have mobile phones and 99% have TV sets. So we are a sophisticated society in terms of uh, aspirations. Some of us were um, educated in the West. They dream of a different future. And uh, if you look around you, you'll see that people are interested in life. And that's the component that I consider to be the only hopeful com- component that we have here. But if you step out of my office, you walk around, you see the injustice, settlements, uh, military patrols here and there, checkpoints, the wall. And imagine as a German, you know, how can you see a wall and accept it? That's why I say to your government, revisit your strategies, guys. Uh, Why are Israeli citizens not allowed to come here? Because Israel tells them that this is unsafe. And obviously, when emotions run uh, high, this territory becomes unsafe to Israelis. And as I told you, in the lack of, uh, or the era of the lack of justice, you will get this uh, friction that's to exist. But uh, I'm sure Israelis come 
because it's not difficult to enter these territories. I'm sure you've driven in without anybody asking you any questions or. But, but, but there was. Did a, you feel unsafe here? Not yet. <laughs> Until this moment. <laughs> but but there, but there was a sign like it's it's forbidden by law to come as an Israeli citizen. Will you be showing that sign in your? Uh, Yeah, film. Uh, you know, because I always wanted to take a picture of that sign, but felt you know unsafe to I, take it. I, I, took I, a, I took a picture, and we're gonna show it like mm. right now. Right now. So, ghetto is not a term that we would like to use because it's connected to the Holocaust. It's connected to the history that you don't like to recall. Uh, but this is more of. Uh, of uh, the Swiss cheese, I say, you know, this territory is divided into the Swiss cheese where Israel gets the cheese and we get the holes. And we're living in holes here, basically. We're living in holes in cantons. Palestine uh, versus the Israeli mines is, has to be a, a cantonized uh, bulk of people living in uh, territories that are totally disconnected. And if they disconnect, they can control us easier. Tell me who runs Israel. Is it sense or total madness? I would tell you total madness. Fear. We need maybe, the... Maybe the fear. Well, you know, if you walk out in the street, you have given people their right, you become an obedient uh, citizens of the... and serving uh, democracy and upholding the rule of law. Why would you fear? Same here. If Israel says, here is the Palestinian territories as defined in the international law, as defined uh, by UN resolutions, Uh, I think justice will prevail and neighbors will live side by side. But you say to people, I'm building settlements, I'm building a wall, I'm annexing land, I'm confiscating water, and I'm uh, building checkpoints and I'm besieging Gaza, and you have to accept uh, that you defy or you give up your right of return, and you have to give up your uh, 1967 borders and bow in respect of uh, occupation. And in the end... In the end, I always uh, like to know what's your dream. What, what is your what's your solution to all this? Where, how can there be peace? Like a two state solution, one state, three states, four states. What, what, what do you what do you what, what do you want to see in the end? What do you want to give your children? It's funny because when I used to listen to my mother, she used to say, you know, hopefully your future will be better than our present days. And funny enough, I say that to my kids now, uh, and that's my main dream, is to get my get kids to live uh, with their space of life, to excel, to prosper, to produce, and to become a knowledge productive society. You know, we've had a lot of bloodshed, we had a lot of anguish. What we need to see is a different future for our kids. And I tell you for sure, I remain hopeful, despite the fact that 2,000 people were killed in Gaza a few days ago, and as we speak, the war is now in a lull situation, but uh, it's ongoing. I remain hopeful and uh, but, 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 things will change, I, I'm sure. But what do you hope for? T two states, you want to have your own state or do you want to share a state with Israel? I had uh, hoped that we would have two states, but with annexation of more land, of this geographical appetite that Israel has, maybe we'll end up with one state. Oh. run Like a bi-national state? Israel will not accept, you know, because we multiply quite fast. Uh, po population increases <laughs> How in is no that? time. How is that? Do you make, we don't waste do you make more love uh, than Israel? Well, uh, that's uh, something beyond my scope. But uh, I would say, you know, we are a very energetic society. <laughs> <laughs> we produce kids more than the Israelis. Their population concern really threatens the demography as Israel sees it. So they don't want to have us there. And uh, the rights of our brothers and sisters uh, living in 1948 areas now controlled by Israel and is considered to be by Israel as Israel are not given the rights to, to, to a space of their uh, rights and space to uh, access a better future is basically evident that we will not be existing in a binational state. And, 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 and give me a year. When, when, will, when will peace be accomplished? When do you think, be naive? It's funny because you interview me uh, the day when I published an article, The End of Israel. It's titled The End of Israel. Oh. And I, in that article, I make fun of people uh, somehow who are saying, you know, when is the end of Israel? I say, you know, when is the end to hu humanity in the Middle East with Arab Springs, with total unrest, with the evolution of... Uh, Uh, resistive fronts who are becoming more uh, uh, religious militants 
you see funny things that are happening and I say, you know, is it the end of Israel or the end of Arabs? Is it the, the Arab state or the Sunni state? Is it the, uh, uh, Israel finishing or is it the uh, establishment of a Christian state, say in Iraq or a Shiite state or what have you? The world that we live in is a total madness. This is certainly a life that's too challenging for somebody like me to even love to witness. But I'm living it and I'm learning as you learn and try to simplify. Is there a recipe against madness? There is a recipe called sense. But that uh, four uh, letter word is, is it four or five? It's five, I think. Yeah, five. Five, yes. That five letter word is uh, difficult to uphold. It's easier said than done. What about a four letter word, love? Uh, that's a secret formula that should uh, prevail. And it is the message of God. If love had existed, I think. Uh, love your neighbor. Um, love yourself even. Uh, be selfish, uh, but uh, live and let live. Live and love and space and justice uh, make a world of a difference. And I think Israel ought to know, to, to know this, maybe through your camera. Uh, Israeli politicians, if they care to watch this show, would have to understand that history showed that we have not learned from history. We keep repeating the same mistakes. Hopefully in Israel, there will be someone who will not repeat the mistakes of history because uh, injustice and security is a formula that has not been workable even on the moon. So how will it work here? And uh, I tell you, this land is considered to have been occupied in six days. If you hear and read the history, this land... 67 war. Yeah, 67 war took six days for Israel to control this land. But uh, God has created the universe in six days and rested on the seventh. So we asked the Israelis, when is humanity going to see the seventh day when you withdraw your forces and humanity can be put at ease, at rest and in total space of life, live and let live. Thank you very much. Um, uh, bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.